are equivalent to their converses, but not so for A claims and O claims. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to show that a, an A claim can diverge in truth value from its converse. Okay, the second kind of operation that we need to learn is called obversion. Now, obversion works like this. First, start with the original claim and change the kind of claim you have by moving horizontally. That is, if you start with an I claim, change it to its associated O claim. If you start with an E claim, change it to its associated A claim, and so on. And then, after you've done that, what you need to do is to replace the predicate term, the P, with its complementary term. Now, let me say a word about what that means. If you've got a term like dogs, well, then the complement term is supposed to refer to everything else in the universe. Everything else in the universe. Everything in the universe that is not a dog. So, the most easy way of saying what the complement term of dogs is, is to say, well, that would be the class of non-dogs. Okay? After you've done those two steps, you've found the obverse of the original statement. So, for example, if we start with an A claim like all students are poor people, to find the obverse of that claim, first we move along the square horizontally, we get the E claim, so that will be no students are poor people, but we're not yet done. The next step is to change the predicate term, poor people, to its uh, complementary term. So we'll just call that non-poor people. And so the resulting claim is that no students are non-poor people. Now, here's what's interesting about obverses. No matter what kind of categorical claim with which you begin, the obverse will be equivalent to what you started with. Okay? That is, all categorical statements are equivalent to their obverses, whether it's an A claim, E claim, I claim, or O claim. Okay, pretty neat. Finally, there's the transformation called contraposition. And contraposition works like this. First, you want to take the original claim and swap the subject and predicate one for another, just like we did when we were doing converses. And then second, replace both terms by their complementary terms. Okay? So for example, let's start with a claim that says no dogs are cats. Okay? So first, swap subject and predicate to say no cats are dogs, and then replace each term with its complementary term. So replacing cats with non-cats and dogs with non-dogs, we get no non-cats are non-dogs. Okay? Now, that's sort of a, a needlessly complex way of saying something, but again, the point is going to be that the relation of contraposition has some interesting consequences for truth. And this time, the lesson is going to be that uh, A claims and O claims are equivalent to their contrapositors, where E claims and I claims are not equivalent to their contrapositors. So let's take an O claim to verify that its uh, contrapositive is equivalent to it. So let's take an O claim that says, for example, uh, some students are not teachers. Okay? Some students are not teachers. Let's try to find the contrapositive of that claim. Well, first, swap students and teachers, and we get some teachers are not students, and then we swap both of those terms for their complementary terms. So we get some non-teachers are not non-students. Okay? Now, it may not be obvious, but in fact, some non-teachers are not non-students says, in fact, the very same thing as some students are not teachers. I'll leave that as an exercise, too. Okay, a couple more things I want to say about this categorical logic. Uh, by the way, you might be wondering where the letters come from. A and I 
come from the Latin word affirmo, which means I affirm. <clears throat> and that's because both the A claim and the I claim are affirmative statements. They have uh, a positive or affirmative quality because they say only uh, that things are a certain way, that all things are a certain way, or that some things are a certain way. There's no negative particles in their construction. Contrast that with the E and the O claim. Well, the E claim says that no S are P, and the O claim so says that some S are not P. And so there's, those are negative forms. And that's where those letters come from, because Latin for I deny is nego, N-E-G-O, hence the E and the O. So <clears throat> you don't have to remember where those letters come from, but you do have to remember that we will talk sometimes about the quality of a categorical statement. And by quality, we just mean, well, is it positive or affirmative or negative? Okay? A claims and I claims are affirmative. E claims and O claims are negative. Uh, one more point. We'll sometimes talk about not just the quality of a categorical statement, but the quantity of a categorical statement. Okay? Uh -uh. And so we'll say of A claims and E claims that their quantity is universal, whereas the quantity of I claims and O claims is particular. Okay? Because A claims and E claims make a claim about how the whole world is, in effect. A claims talk about all S, and E claims talk about no S. But the other kinds of claims, I claims and O claims, talk only about how some of the world is. Right? They talk only about a particular part of the world. Hence, A claims and E claims have universal quantity, I claims and O claims have particular quantity. Okay, well I think that's plenty for today. There's more in chapter 9 of Mark's book about the nature of categorical logic, but I'll let you look at that on your own. Thanks for watching.